Here at Helmuth Ford, we are a small town dealership with no hassle and no pressure. Delta Fire and Rescue presents the Delta Haunted House at 109 North Center Street in Delta. Admission is just $10 per person. The Delta Haunted House is open each Friday and Saturday throughout October and on Halloween night from 8 to 10 p.m. Food and drinks will be available for purchase and now accepting cash and most major credit cards. It's the Delta Fire and Rescue Delta Haunted House Fridays and Saturdays in October and on Halloween night. Watch Pekin Panther football live right here this fall on Steve Shetler Media, Facebook, and YouTube with live announcers and an updated scoreboard, plus an area scoreboard to keep you updated on other schools of interest. It's Pekin Panther football live right here on Steve Shetler Media. Welcome to this edition of Morgan the Ask For podcast. A little bit of a late turn of events. Uh, plan on going live again tonight with Trevor, but he got a something. He texted me about 6.45 and said he uh, can't make it tonight. As we've talked about, we have other responsibilities, so not everything goes according to plan. So we're just doing a regular podcast here, so you'll be able to listen to us on regular podcast and, and YouTube, but won't be live tonight. I want to thank Zach for stepping in on, on very, very short notice. Usually we give him a few days uh, notice, but uh, our um, co-host um, always comes in and subs for us. Uh, we want to thank him a lot. Um, just a couple things from last week where we did go live on Facebook and YouTube. Had a lot of good responses. Um, ran into people all weekend uh, doing different things, and they all said uh, – I was too much in their feed, which is a good thing, I, I guess, if, if that's what I'm trying to do is to get uh, this podcast out a little bit more. Um, I know uh, Steph at the Elks said her son was watching uh, TikTok and saw a thing on TikTok and, and several people were saying on, on Facebook and everything. So thank you for those of you that are, are watching and tuning in. We are trying to do a few more things here. And, and Zach, I know Zach, you always listen and stuff. So it's always uh, good to, to hear people. And then I was over at your house last weekend and, and Bill and, and those were, we're talking about it as well. So again, thanks to everybody. And just as always, we'll get this up, you know, rate, like, subscribe on Spotify and on Spotify, you can see us uh, kind of like YouTube. Uh, but if you do uh, watch or listen, uh, listen on Spotify, you can watch it as well. Um, and then the podcast uh, is also on uh, YouTube at, and YouTube is at Morgan Yass for podcast is our, is our link there. So if you want to um, tune into that, it'll be up uh, later today or, or tomorrow morning. I don't know exactly how long it takes to get back up, but I'll load everything up tonight. And it, it does take a little bit. Um, but again, thanks for uh, coming on, Zach. Uh, just, you know, I know this is always Wednesday. So, you know, kind of the, the reviewing of the Iowa State game, we always try to do pretty quick, more preview uh, just because if you, as a Hawkeye or a Cyclone fan, and you want to have the recap, you've listened, you've talked to your friends, you, you've already hashed it out. So just real quick, Iowa State won a game, 20 to, another, 20 to nothing, first time since 1971, road shutout in a conference game, covered the spread, didn't look great, but still came out on top, came out with the win, everything's still in front of them. That's the real quick synopsis. Rocco Beck needs to play better to start, but he does make the plays in later in games uh, for the win, just like he did at Iowa, and he did it at Houston. But we do need a better start the further the season gets down the road because we're going to be playing some better teams. Yeah, you, you took care of business. It was kind of like an Iowa Hawkeye victory. The defense <laughs> kind of carried it all night long, and uh, you did what you have to do. I mean, Iowa State is in a perfect position. I mean – I don't think they even necessarily need to go undefeated. I mean, they need they need to win the Big 12, and they can probably do that with one, two, maybe two losses. And, you know, as an Iowa fan, we, we, we're going to need that because uh, obviously we're hoping to be 10-2 and two with losses to hopefully a top-10 Iowa State team and, a you know, one or, one or two Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, really, as long as you take care of business, Iowa, big underdogs this coming weekend. But if you win that game and you don't get shut out, 
you know, if if you lose this game forty to to seventeen, it's probably okay. You've proven that your offense is better. Ohio State's really really good, and it's better than losing it thirty to zero. If you score zero again against Ohio State, it just shows still how far you have to go, and that will not help your playoff cause. But I, so I think you need to score a couple touchdowns. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, they people on talk that this Ohio State team might be the greatest team, you know, on paper. I'm not even close to putting them there. But, yeah, like you said, I think if Iowa can keep it within 25 and put up, you know, 17 points, um, seven, over 17, I still think everything's in front of them. Um, a, a lot would probably hinge on how Ohio State and Iowa State finish. But you need just, them. Yeah, you need them. Just, to just looking at both of their schedules, I can't see Iowa State losing more than twice and probably not being in the Big 12 championship. I mean, we probably may need them to win it if they had two losses, but hopefully Iowa State can keep rolling. I don't see Ohio State losing more than once, maybe, and that would probably put them right back in the Big Ten championship. And uh, they're going to get in regardless if they have one loss, that's for sure. So a lot depends on uh, two teams and how, like you said, how Iowa looks this week. They're going to have to show a little bit of a little bit of something on offense. And as good as our running back is, I just think it's still going to be hard to to run the ball on all those five-star uh, defensive players. So Cade's going to have to do something and look a lot better than he has in the last year and a half. Yeah, Ohio State has the players to truly commit eight, nine players in the box and just say, all right, Cade McNamara and the two receivers, it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, you beat us. And if you do, tip your hat, they'll change their defense. But – they're going to have eight men in the box, and they are not going to let Caleb Johnson run wild. I just don't see it. They have got the athletes to be able to cover outside one on one. They don't need safety help. And as long and, and until they beat them a couple times deep, I just don't see Ohio State getting out of that. Yeah, I mean, I agree. And I just listening to washed up walk ons here. Uh, they they even get they would even give the advantage to probably Ohio State in the running game. It's going to come down to if if we can, like you said, beat them in one on one coverage. As good as our running back is, they're probably going to run the ball better than we do. So um, we're going to have to do something on the offensive end and, and probably still force a turnover or two. Uh, but yeah, if we can't beat them one on one, we're in for a, a drubbing, and we have really no games in front of us to you know, draw the national attention anymore unless somehow we could make the Big Ten championship and probably play Ohio State again. Yeah, that's with, you know, what was it, two years ago, three years ago that Evans, you know, had the forced fumble sack and, and fumble recovery for a touchdown. You're going to need one of them, especially if your offense isn't doing what it needs to do. If you can get one of them and you can get one big play, there's 14 points, and then you can score one or two. You got a shot. That I, I don't see another way that Iowa wins that football game. Yeah, I don't think anybody's expecting us to win. I mean, if they did, it would be one of the biggest upsets in Iowa history. I think it's just a matter of being able to compete because last year, I, I believe we didn't score a point against a ranked team. So, no, nope, 92 um, to nothing, I'm pretty sure, in the games. We've got to, uh, we've got to compete and then. If we can compete, that's going to get the fan base going again, and then we just got to start churning out victories. And is is that game at two thirty on Saturday? Right, it is to CBS, so it'll be yes. and then. Yep. Okay, and then Iowa, you know, Iowa State, uh, kind of going flipping back to Iowa State. They play at six thirty on Big Fox, so big CBS and Big Fox. So I both. Uh, you know, Iowa is at Ohio State, but Iowa State's in Ames, night game, wide out, fireworks, drone. They're wearing white. I call it the Stormtrooper uniforms. Um, they're making a big production out of this deal, and Coach McCarney's back in town. Uh, big game, and again, as Zach said earlier, every game for Iowa State just keeps getting bigger and bigger. First time 4-0 since I was in college in 2000. If they could win this one, it's 5-0. and I think that's the first time since 1980, uh, which I was barely born in 1980. So, I mean, we're talking generations of 
of two generations of fans and fandom. In 1980, I was actually living in Ames as a one-year-old. How about that? <laughs> yeah, you probably don't remember much about nope, that. I do not. So, but yeah, my dad was just finishing up college in 1980. So, um, yeah, Iowa State. It's it's another one of those games you'd love to see them get out, win 34 to 10, something like that. But Iowa State's in a position now. You just win, just win. Try to stay healthy and just win, and everything else will take care of itself. Yeah, I I mean I think Iowa State's going to win, but I think you guys are catching Baylor in desperation mode right oh, now. They've, they've got to win a game, and and they're 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 not a bad team. I mean they can score. Um, they've lost some tight ones. I think you're going to get their best shot. I mean, I'm a horrible better, but if I was betting, I would take Baylor in the points, especially if you could have got them around 14. But right. um, I think it'll be a good game. I think Iowa State's going to pull it out late. I just think Baylor, they lose this, they're done. I mean, they are in full desperation mode right now. They are. Um, yeah, it's a desperate team, so they got nothing. What is it? The water boy, I think I heard the reference this week where they got nothing to lose. So it's try every trick play. It's try everything. I think if they lose this game, there's a very high probability that Dave Aranda is fired on Sunday. Or maybe even not allowed on the plane, a la Lane Kiffin at USC. Um, they lost on a Hail Mary to Colorado. They lost, you know, a very close game to BYU. And BYU and Colorado are on top of the Big 12. They're ahead of Iowa State right now because they're both 2-0. and Iowa State just hasn't played two games yet in the Big 12. So they're close to being four and one and being a, you know, Aranda's job is safe and he's getting better and he's doing things the right way to those two losses, one Hail Mary and then lost in overtime. And then just a, they came back, they got down really quick to BYU, I believe, and then came back and made a heck of a game out of it. They're close. And that's the little part that scares you. And then if they're rallying around their coach, they had the the dreaded players only meeting this week that you don't ever want to hear happening because you know it's not going well when those things happen. But sometimes there is a little bit of a jolt when that stuff happens. And I hope it's not enough to get to trip up Iowa State. Yeah, I think I think it'll be a good game to watch. I'm excited to watch that one, like you I'm said. Not happy but... I'm missing it, but it's it'll be fun on Saturday golfing. So Baylor, I think Baylor, I'll give you their best, but I'm just not sure it's good enough. So uh, should be a good one to tune into. Absolutely. Uh, again, big Fox. I think Tim Brando's on the call there. I, I like him old school. Does you know, he, He's going to have his cliches and everything. So really, and then, you know, kind of finishing up um, college football and everything, Georgia, Alabama. And for, and as a big 12 fan, and even a Big Ten fan, I think Ohio State can can hang with those boys. But those boys are different down there. I don't care what anybody says. They, Their athletes are just different. That quarterback looks awesome. To, and he's thrown it up to a 17-year-old Ryan Williams. But he is literally just throwing it up and hoping his guy's better than the other guys. And, they, and in this case, and on this Saturday, Ryan Williams was the best player on the field. And he's 17 year old years old. He should be in high school. And he made the deep five star D backs at Georgia look absolutely silly with his bobble three times and turnaround catch and then his catch to win the football game. 75 yarder went up over two guys and then made them both miss and then showed his speed, not ran them. And I'd be shocked if those two DBs aren't on Sundays as well. And he made them look stupid. And for the arguments that the Big 12 should get as many playoff teams as everybody else, Georgia and Alabama are different. And we've talked about this on the podcast, but I think the biggest travesty of last year's playoff debacle, it wasn't Florida State missing out. It was Georgia. Georgia is the two-time defending champ and didn't get in the playoff with their only loss being to Alabama in the SEC championship game. Yeah, and I wouldn't argue. I wouldn't argue with you. I'm sure Michigan was ecstatic to, ex, you know, ecstatic to see that uh, Georgia didn't make it because uh, that that was one less team they really need to worry about. And uh, I'm with you. The SEC, those two are dominant. I mean, I think they're 
SEC is going to be a lock for four, and I wouldn't be shocked if they got five in this year. And I wouldn't be shocked if Georgia won at all, after, even after losing that game. Absolutely. And how about this? I, I believe I saw the stat. I should have pulled this up, but I didn't. In the last, maybe in his career, but Kirby Smart's lost six games to other people in six games to Alabama. He's got like 12 losses in his career. He's one.